So this was in Bar Biblical Archaeological Review, uh, their winter 2020 issue. I showed you an example of as the ox turns with the um, uh, script going down like an ox is plowing a field going left to right. This one is not that bad, but it still has the uh, all capitals, no spaces, and uh, the, uh, the words kind of are cut. It's like, oh, I ran out of marble. I'll continue the word on the next line. And so here you go. Um, I included over here uh, the uppercase letters so you have a, a fighting chance of it. This is a gamma. This is an eta. Uh, this is a mu. It's kind of well, looks like yeah. it. And this is a sigma, just like it is in, in Russia when it was the Soviet um, uh, empire it was the USSR. Well, uh, in Russian, it's CCCP. <laughs> Actually, it's SSSR, and uh, and, and that's uh, they kept the uh, uh, the old-fashioned way of doing a sigma using a letter C, and then uh, here's our famous epsilon uh, in capital. It may, it looks like a Y. And that's why it became a Y in when it got into um, got into Latin. Uh, so here is a um, it's a, a Jewish burial in a catacomb in Rome using Greek letters. <laughs> it's like it's not in Hebrew, it's not in Latin, it's. It, it was in uh, the Koine Greek. And so uh, as you're armed with this, do you see any rhyme or reason or any, um, any letters at all that makes sense to you? I see an epi. Ooh, where? Uh, uh, end of the second line, beginning of the third line. Ah. Okay. Except that's not oh. a... Uh, that's not a P. Oh, come on, R. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, but very good. It's an E P, but that's not, that's an R. That's yeah. That's okay. Nice try. I like that. Part of this is pattern recognition. I see the double L's. These are gamma, gamma. So that's an uppercase. So it's. Oh, gamma, gamma. Oh, my God. So that's G, G. And uh, so, okay, I see two G's. Yeah, gamma. and that's kind of like uh, Onkelos, uh, uh, two G's gives you an NG sound. Ding. Okay, good. So if you know that this Y is an epsilon, do these three letters look familiar? It oh, looks yeah, like that, toy in English. Oh, it's the. That's of the, the. of the. the. Yeah, it's a genitive of the. the. Two, it's two. T-O-U, of the, uh-huh. It's ego. I see um, non nominative that T-O-S means it's a male. Yeah. Down here, nominative. right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Of course, it looks like table of contents to us, right? T-O-C. <laughs> but yeah. yes, that is right. It's t uh, t uh, a tau, omicron, and sigma, toss. Mm-hmm. How about these four letters right here? Meta. Meta. Anyone remember what meta was? It's a change. Oh, a change, change, right. I was thinking of um, metamorphosis would be more of a, a change or form. A meta just by itself is the word with. Oh. With. The third line is like primeti, prime? Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's certainly P-R-I-M-E, prime, okay. Could be. So what I'm going to do is show the, uh, show the answer key here, 
Uh, the trick to solving this is uh, finding out where the syllable breaks are and where the word breaks are. So here goes. Uh, this uh, word up here is a word that is new to you, but en, you should know, means in. So en thadi means in this place, or it would be akin to um, uh, here lies, uh, you know, Joe, he died with his boots on, right? Kayete uh, is reclining, so here lies, and... Um, uh, primitiba, ba. Uh, if you look at it, translated sometimes that B gets translated as a V, as in Victor, but primitiba. It's like, okay, it sounds, it's a person's name. And kind of like, kind of be nice to be the first, right? So, uh, meta is with. Uh, two is uh, of the, this next one is uh, a word you don't know. Engonu, O-U, this means of. So here it is over on the side, Engonu, of a grandson. So of the, of grandson. And... Um, this doesn't look anything like lowercase, but this is A U T Eta Sigma. There it is in lowercase. And it's rare oh, in the wow. New Testament because <clears throat> most of the New Testament is some, some man talking or someone speaking to a mixed crowd, and they would always use a masculine form. Here, it's speaking to this um, uh, grandmother. And so atase uh, is the right word for it. It's of her. So of the, of grandson of her. So uh, with her grandson. And then this is the grandson's name. E-U, which means what in Greek? Good. New, new, good, good, yeah. Good. EU, I mean, good, good. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. No. EU is good. And then this is a uh, what is this letter? That's uh, the F sound, F sign. Yeah. So, frenontas. So, I don't know what frenontas is, but it's yeah, that's his name. So, it's he, whatever it is, he's good at it, you know. <laughs> uh, then. En is the preposition for in. in. This word, I'll give you a chance to, now that you know where the breaks are uh, and that these are, that's an Eta and that's an Eta. Can you pronounce this word? Oh, that's peace. Very good. And you, can you pronounce it? Oi. <laughs> I, I, Raina. Yeah, Irene, Irene. Oh, Irene. okay. Yeah, so where we get the word Irene. Yeah. So this is, this doesn't look anything like <laughs> we used to see it in lowercase, but this is uh, the, those letters, Eta's in uppercase are H's. And then this word is a wrap around, just like grandson wrapped around. This word wraps around K-O-I-M-E-S-I-S -S, over here. Comesis means to sleep. Comesis. So K-O-I-K-O-I-M-E-S-I-S-M-E-S-I-S. Comesis. And then... Um, That's like coma, but there's no I in coma. Correct. Uh, so this is, uh, you'll, you have to, if you look it up in the dictionary, you'll get sleep out of this. And then uh, A-U-T-O-N, here it is in lower case, a tone is a genitive because of the, uh, the omega. And this gets translated as of them. 
So it would say, uh, in this place reclines the grandmother with her grandson, who has this name, in peace, uh, sleep of them. You know, that's the rough wooden version. If you were to translate it into English, you would say, here lies grandma with her grandson. They died with their boots on. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I ran across this in my uh, 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 magazine. I'm going, oh, I've got to scan it in and show them what it is. Yes, yes. I really liked also, um, this is kind of a historical interest. You often think of the menorah in the temple as somehow oil going up through these branches and there's wicks coming off of it. But if you look really closely, each of those branches is merely a, a lamp stand and a lamp, little lamp with oil in it is sitting on top of it. And, mm -hmm. and then their wick is inside the little oil lamp itself. Mm -hmm. I looked at that and go, oh, how curious, right? Any copies of it, they would say, oh, well, we'll just put these little, so these are little clay lamps with olive oil in them and a wick, and then it's just sitting on a brass uh, uh, candelabra. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you for uh, letting me uh, take you on a tour of the catacombs of Rome. And if you, over the next two months, run across a, an engraving of some sort like this, uh, this tombstone, um, I would love to send it to me and I'll see if I can break it apart and uh, okay. and then use it as a, as a nice starting point. It's starting to get our, our brains used to seeing uppercase. Thank you.